In this case, what happened is that I came across this incredible book of um, retablos from Mexico. And retablos are very, very important. Um, as far as Mexico, especially, outside of Mexico, they're usually called ex votos. But uh, in this case, it was a contemporary book of retablos. And a retablo is uh, a prayer, an answered prayer. And the person who makes up the prayer, whose life is involved in, in praying to the saint or requesting something from the saint, in this case, Saint Sebastian, goes to a retablito in Mexico. And that's a painter. And the painter hears the story and then makes this, this painting. And normally they're on tin. Normally they're very, very simple. And, uh, but what, what got me is the fact that this was a, a chapter in the book of homosexual prayers. Now, in, in, in strict Catholic uh, religion, or it's, not close, it's about accidents, it's about uh, not being uh, hurt if you're just thrown off a building, things like that. Uh, but it's never, 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 not until this time, uh, uh, prayers of homosexuals uh, because of their own lives are involved here. In this case, it's Sylvia M which is the abbreviated name on the Ritapo prayer. And she is asking uh, Saint Sebastian, who's the same model, okay, opposed to Saint Sebastian, uh, with the uh, uh, male genital, um, to basically, uh, the prayer is that Veronica is her lover and they're living together uh, and they're at peace, they're not being bugged. And so uh, I just don't make it that way. Uh, it, it happened that she, this woman's a professor of art at a very, very famous uh, Southern University, and got email from her saying, I love your work, I want you to photograph me, and by the way, I don't have uh, legs or hands. I said, well, that's interesting. Send me some pictures of yourself. And she did, and she was fantastic. So um, I sent her a little sketch uh, by fax, and she said, oh, this sounds very, very good. And uh, it took about a month, I think, to basically uh, paint the Duccio driving out the devil. And it's all about the, uh, you know, what do you want? You want the spiritual paradise, or you want the world. And in this case, the world is uh, different degrees, the different kinds of architecture, especially uh, 13th century uh, Sienese architecture is involved here. But also the Twin Towers and, and uh, that all, that kind of disaster uh, that we were going through and still are. And then, of course, I made everything more complex as I do. Uh, I made this, this kind of sculptural uh, bench with a Chardin. It's a, a Fontaine de Tour uh, vase. And um, uh, this I had in my studio. I had things like that in my studio all the time. I could like them. And uh, the whole thing just was terrific. Just was terrific. Uh, I didn't know the pose for her. I knew that she was going to crown this person. And this person was very, very thin. She came to Albuquerque and I put them up at a hotel. She and her boyfriend have since married. And uh, uh, she had this little wheelchair and she didn't have um, artificial legs. What she had is she had these legs made out of uh, crocheted fabric with toe shoes. It was great. And of course she couldn't, she had to be carried around. And uh, it was fantastic. So she came to the studio, had her made up, and this woman was made up too. Um, and I had spent time in India years ago. I lived there for five months, and I remember this particular kinds of, of poses, in, in, uh, especially the erotic Indian in sculpture, as, as, as in, in Kajarao. And this model is so attuned to things. I said, just give me this, just give me this. And she gives me this kind of great sculpture. Uh, just, she has a great body, a great body, and uh, she's she's beyond fantastic because she is the same woman again in the Bathurst photograph, wearing that little body stocking that's about this <laughs> before it goes on the body, and uh, she represents a, a nice reprieve from a lot of my work because she is very has a very beautiful body to begin with. And uh, in this case, too, she looks a bit like Ingrid Bergman. Uh, but she's very, very funny. Uh, we made these broken arrows. We put bit of blood in. Uh, and it becomes a kind of an illumination. Of course, the, um, the prayer is here. It's, it's copied from the book. I should have Sylvia M, but we left just Sylvia, make it more uh, mystical. This is a, a kind, as in all my work, it's about 
a moral consideration and concern of being human and enjoying to the full the human capacity. What happened here is that uh, I was approached in Paris by a couple from Milan, and they have a gallery in Milan, and uh, they were very nice. Uh, and when I saw her, I was just knocked out because I, I haven't seen a woman this incredibly beautiful and look very Italian, incredibly Italian. And uh, I accepted the show on the on the caveat that I have uh, that I photograph her. And uh, she said yes, he said yes, and um, so the next time I was back in Paris, I photographed her, and I got this at the flea market in Paris, this 20s crown, and uh, she's just a very, very lovely, beautiful uh, person, and I worked with, again, the hairstylist who's the, uh, the lover of the guy in the photograph, now reflected. And uh, I shot the six by seven. I love that camera because I can see directly through it. And um, I made sketches of this and I knew exactly what I wanted. I knew where her body was supposed to be, where this wood was. Uh, this, came, come from a, 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 this came from a bill at the flea market too. I, I buy these old um, letters and bills and sometimes I just cut them up and, and make these very, very uh, strange um, lettered, mysterious forms and um, I picked up that morning before the show I picked up uh, branches and leaves and the rest is done very very critically and slowly uh, framed through glass and she is just a, a quintessential beautiful woman and um, the name uh, La Giovanissa means uh, a woman in her prime and uh, I, I guess she is. Uh, is the same woman photographed in another country. Uh, but in this case, it's about uh, Ar it's Ars Moriendi or The Good Death. And uh, the great thing about this is the fact that I wanted to pose her this way. I had gotten a mirror, uh, I borrowed the mirror, um, and I knew that this particular hospital had these severed heads. But I didn't know, I've never seen them, so I said, uh, to the guy who worked with it, I said, well, bring out the heads. Bring out the heads. We basically had her in, in a form. I had this background. I had painted it in Albuquerque, brought it with me. Uh, this all came from locations. And when he brought out the heads, the stench was incredible. Incredible. These things must be, I don't know, uh, 10 years old at least, and medical students go back and, and take parts out or whatever. Um, I had to spray the air. Luckily, there was some some of this uh, spray that you have in, in toilets, you know, to repress this odoriferousness. And uh, she was almost ready to faint. And I only took about three or four photographs. It was great. It was great. It was great. And the thing is, this I put the heads on. I, I put gloves on, um, examination gloves. I put the heads down, and then this one. And this one kind of looks like her too. I can see her. This is this old lady. And maybe she'll look like that. Maybe, in fact, she'll be the head of some other photographer's book in the future. But uh, I love this one. I love it. It's elegant. Uh, there's no such thing as a good death, I don't think. Uh, and it, unless you're uh, totally insane, uh, a healthy person, a normal person, fears death. Because uh, there's the cutoff. There's the end of the exposure of life.